welcome back to our channel. My name is Miss Robinson and I am back with another math video for you guys. Today we are starting our lessons on chapter five and we are starting our lessons on chapter five with lesson 5.1. And in lesson 5.1, we are going to be looking at something called function tables or they can also be called input and output tables. And so what we are gonna learn when we look at these function tables or input output tables is that we are going to be given some data that is presented to us in the form of a table. And the first thing that we wanna do is to identify any patterns that we can find within that data table or that function table. There are a couple of ways that we can look for patterns. We can look for patterns just going straight across and we can look at patterns by examining the relationships between the pieces of data that we have inside those function tables and all of that will make sense as you see one of these tables that I'm talking about in our examples. Now once we figure out what the pattern is to that function table, we are going to use what we know about the pattern to figure out some unknown parts or some unknown, unknown pieces of data within that function table. So I'm going to set up the camera to give you guys some examples of some function tables and how we can identify patterns and use those patterns to figure out the unknown that we are shown in our table. And then I'm going to give you guys some closing thoughts after I give you those examples. So hold on one second, let me get my whiteboard set up and I will see you in just a moment. Alrighty, here is our first example using a function table or an input output table. Now before we go through and solve this problem, I want us to make sure that we understand the part and the proper vocabulary that is associated when you're working with these types of tables. So the first thing I want to make sure is anytime that you're looking at a series of numbers going across or from left to right, that is con considered to be called a sequence. So this is a sequence of numbers, one, two, three, four, five. This is one sequence. This down here, six, 12, eight, and then these two numbers that we're gonna be figuring out in a second, that's a separate sequence. So the sequence is the group of numbers in a function table going across. If I'm just looking at one of the numbers in the function table, for example, if I'm just looking at the six, that is called a term in the sequence. So six is the first term in the sequence of numbers down at the bottom of my function table. Secondly, the reason this is called an input output table is because this row here that's titled, or this sequence I should say here that's titled pans, that is considered your input or the value of, or the X value in your function table. You don't have to worry about that too much. I'm just introducing those terms to you. A, because that explains why it's sometimes called an input output table. And B, because I know those are the terms that they're gonna be using when you're dealing in math come fifth grade for sure. I'm not certain about fourth grade, but I know when I taught fifth grade that that is the term that they use or that is the vocabulary. So this sequence of number called pans would be considered your input or your X value. This sequence titled muffins would be considered your output or your Y values. So those are the parts of a function table. So now that we have that under control and we've explained that, let's go through and see if we can identify a pattern. So there's two ways I can do that. The first way is I can just look at my sequences and ask myself, what do I notice in terms of patterns with this sequence here titled pans? My first term is a one, the second term is a two, the third term is a three, the third or the fourth term is a four, and the fifth term is a five. Right away, the pattern that I notice in that sequence is that this is counting by ones and it's going up. It's in sequential order, meaning that it is in order, starting at one, two, three, four, five. That's an easy pattern for me to identify. So that's one pattern that I see. Now if I look at my sequence titled muffins and I see that the first term is a six, the second term is a 12, the third term is an 18, this one's not as easy to see as that sequence, but it's not too difficult. I know that I'm going from six and then 12 and then 18. I can see by looking at that, that each term is increasing by six. Or I could say it as, okay, when I go from one term to the next, I'm gonna add six, because six plus six is 12. 12 plus six is 18. So those are two patterns that I've identified in my function table. 
identifying this pattern doesn't really help me that much in this particular problem because what I'm trying to figure out based on the patterns that I see is what are these missing terms in the sequence titled muffins. So what I really want to do if I'm just identifying patterns going across or by my sequences, I really need to pay close attention to this one and then use what I recognize in terms of patterns here to determine what that term will be and what that term will be. So again, I notice that each term is increasing by six. Six plus six is 12. 12 plus six is 18. So that would tell me then, for me to figure out this term, I'm gonna need to add six to 18. Okay, I know that six plus 18 is gonna give me 24. So that solves that mystery. And then to find this term, I need to remember, okay, now I need to add six to 24. And I know that 24 plus six is going to be 30. So notice that I was just able to really focus on the pattern that I saw there to figure out the missing terms here. Now, I'm gonna show you another way that you can identify a pattern and still get the same answers. Let's say I didn't wanna look at my sequences one at a time to figure out any sort of pattern that I see. I wanted to look at the relationship between my input value and my output value. So that means I'm gonna be looking from top to bottom. I'm gonna look here and here. And then I'm gonna look at that term and that term and that term and that term. And then I wanna see, okay, if I do that, what pattern do I notice? Okay, I notice that when my input is one, my output is six. When my input is two, my output is 12. When my input is three, my output is 18. Hmm, what? pattern can I find from that? Well, after doing a little bit of thinking, I know that, well, one times six is gonna be six, okay? Two times six is gonna be 12, okay? Seems to be working. Three times six is gonna be 18. So immediately I realize, okay, if I'm looking at the relationship between my input and my output, or I'm looking at the pattern from the input to the output, the pattern tells me, okay, I'm supposed to take my input, multiply it by six, and that will give me my output. So then I'm gonna go to my mystery terms because these are the ones that we were trying to figure out. And so I would say, okay, let me use that pattern. Four times six would be what? 24. Five times six would be what? 30. And what you should realize is that I still get the exact same answer for my missing terms as I did when I chose to look for my patterns in just one sequence at a time. So those are your two options. So that's your first example. I'm gonna give you another example and we're gonna practice looking for patterns either just by looking at our sequences or by looking at the relationship between our input and our output. Alrighty, here is our second example. We have a new function table or input output table. Remember, this is sequence number one going across and the title of that sequence is packs. This is sequence number two going across. The title of that sequence is candles. So it looks like this function table is telling me if I buy X number of packs, I will get X number of candles. So the first thing that we wanna do is say, okay, let me look for a pattern just by looking at my sequences one row at a time. So if I look at my packs, my first term is one, then the next term is two, then the next term is three, the next term is four, the next term is five. Easy. The pattern there is that I'm counting by ones. I'm increasing each term by one. Easy enough. Now let me look at the sequence titled candles. My first term is two, my next term is four, my next term is six, and then I have to figure out what these two missing terms would be. So I have two, four, six. What's the pattern, you guys? Well, you should see that in this sequence, the pattern is you're counting by twos, or you could say I'm adding two to each of my terms to find the next one. If I add two to the number two, I get four. If I add two to the number four, I get six. So using that, what would I do to figure out this missing term? 
Well, I would add two to six, and I know that six plus two is going to be eight, so I know the missing term there would be eight. That's me just looking for a pattern going across using my sequence. Now, if I said, well, I'd rather look at the pattern when I'm looking at my input, which would be packs, so the input values would be packs, the output values would be candles. And remember or recognize that your output is going to depend on your input, okay? So that means now instead of going across, I'm looking from top to bottom and trying to see if I can find a pattern there. So when my input is one, my output is two. When my input is two, my output is four. When my input is three, my output is six. And when my input is four, my output is eight. So what pattern can I see there? Now, we've been studying multiplication facts and definitely studying our facts of two and the idea of doubles. And what I should recognize is that the relationship between my input and my output is my output is doubled my input. So whatever my input is, I'm gonna double it to get my output. If I take one and double it, I'm gonna get two. If I take two and double it, I'm gonna get four. If I take three and double it, I get six. And if I take four and double it, I get eight. Another way to say that is the relationship between your input and your output is you're gonna take your input and you're gonna multiply it by two. So whatever your input is, multiply by two. Let me make sure you guys can see that. So input times two. One times two is two. Two times two is four. Three times two is six. Four times two is eight. So that makes it easy for us to figure out what our output would be if our input is five. If my input is five and I take five and I multiply that by two, I'm going to get 10. So if my input is five, my output is going to be 10 based on the pattern that I recognize in my function table. Now, if I just chose to look at it going across, it would have been the same thing. My pattern when I just looked at my sequence was I was adding two to the previous input. So if I took eight and I added, or the previous output, sorry. If I took eight and I added two, I would get 10. So it still works out. So those are your two examples of how to look at a function table or an input output table, recognize a pattern that you see, and then use that pattern to figure out your missing terms. Most of the time, from my experience, you're going to be looking for missing terms here. Every now and then, they'll give you the terms here, and then you'll have to use those terms to figure out the missing terms and your input values. But either way, step one is figure out that pattern and then go from there. So, all right, so those are your examples on how to look at function tables or input output tables, whatever you decide to call them, how to identify the patterns that you see either by just looking at one set of terms at a time or looking from your input to your output. And then once you figure out what that pattern is, use what you know to figure out the unknown terms in your function table. What I like to do is I like to look at the relationship between the input or the X sequence and the output or the Y sequence because it's easier for me to identify the relationship between the input and the output because I know the output is always affected by whatever is happening with the input sequence. But if you prefer to just find that pattern going one row at a time, that is perfectly fine. You want to choose whatever strategy works best for you. So with that being said, I'm going to close out this video for today. I hope you guys are having a great day and you continue to do so. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.